In this tutorial video, I'm going to go over using MRI Cron to learn neuroanatomy. And specifically, I'm going to focus on how you use overlays in MRI Cron. So hopefully you've taken a look at the first video in my tutorial series, uh, Introducing Brain Navigation with MRI Cron. If not, I recommend doing so. And hopefully you've downloaded the workshop materials. If not, see the link in the description. First, I'm going to go into the MRI Cron workshop materials folder. And I'm going to be using the MRI Cron Windows version. See the link in the description to get the specific version for your computer, say Linux or Mac. These instructions should be similar to those versions. I'm just going to left click to open MRI Cron. And this is opening a brain file that I had loaded when I previously closed MRI Cron. And so I'm going to first open a template brain. So I'm going to go to File, Open Templates, and select CH2 Better. And this is the standard brain in MNI space that can be used to overlay different uh, anatomical atlases or statistical maps. So see the Introduction to Brain Navigation with MRI Cron tutorial to learn how to get the settings that I have here and learn what these different parameters mean. The first thing I'm going to do is open up an overlay and put it on top of this underlying brain that we see here. So I'm going to go to Overlay, Add, And I'm going to navigate within the MRI Cron workshop materials folder into the brain navigation materials folder. And within this folder, there's some materials that my colleagues and I developed for a cognitive neuroscience course. These can be used for any course for which you need to learn neuroanatomy. So open Atlas Lobes. So you should see the color show up in the different lobes of the brain. So if we click on the red area, so left click, here I've selected the frontal lobe, specifically the right frontal lobe. And you can look up at the top where it gives the name of the structure. So frontal lobe underscore R. The R means right. Okay. If we click on the left, you can see that it changes to L. So before we go any further, I want you to open the Brain Navigation Guide that comes with these materials. So go into the Brain Navigation Materials folder and select the Brain Navigation Guide. And here are some learning objectives that will help guide you when learning neuroanatomy. Parts 1 and 2 here, we went over in the Introduction to Brain Navigation with MRI Cron video, so part 1 of this tutorial series. Here we're going to focus on part 3, and I'll show you how to use these templates to learn these different brain structures. And so up here at the top, you see that we focused on the, the lobes and the cerebellum. And so here in the MRI Cron window, you can see by just by clicking on the colored region, you can identify these different structures. So clicking on the red, you can identify the frontal lobe. Okay. Clicking on the blue, you can identify the parietal lobe. Clicking on the yellow, you can identify the temporal lobe. And clicking on the green, you can identify the occipital lobe. And finally, clicking here on the tan, you can identify the cerebellum. And just by clicking around and navigating through the brain in this manner, you can learn how these different structures relate to each other. To help you do that, you can also use a 3D rendering tool. So you can go to Window, Render, and here you see a 3D projection of this brain with the colors on top of it. 
So you can see this red area here. If I left click on the rendered view, it jumps to the surface in the slice view. And so you can see in the sagittal, coronal, and axial views, you can see where on the surface of the brain it is. If you want to make it a little clearer on this rendered view, you can go to Overlay, Search, any depth, and here it'll just fill in these colors at any depth through the brain, whereas previously it was searching only 16 millimeters deep inside of the brain. So this left profile view of a 3D brain is something you might see in textbooks and it might help you to understand how these structures in the slice view match onto the 3D brain. So if I left click here in the parietal, you can see how this point on the surface matches to this point on the slices. Another thing you can do in the slice view window is change the transparency on these overlays. So you can go to overlay, transparency on background, and let's say we'll change it to 60%. And so now you can still see the colors here in the left temporal lobe, but you can see the underlying structures, such as the sulci and gyri. As somewhat of a side note, you might notice that some of the regions are grayed out. For instance, this part of the cortex. It's grayed out because it spans both the occipital and the temporal lobe, and so any region that's gray is not cleanly divided into um, any particular lobe. So this atlas provides a nice introduction to the lobes and the cerebellum. Next, we can look at a more detailed atlas. To do that, first close the atlas that you have overlaid. So go to Overlay, Close Overlays, and then go to Overlay, Add. And now we're going to select the atlas gyri, Open. Okay. And now you'll see much more detail to these structures. So there are colors associated with the specific gyri that would be good for you to know. And if you go back to the learning guide, you'll see that all the structures that are listed here are colored in the atlases that I've provided. For example, where the cursor is here at this crosshair, you see that this is in the left fusiform gyrus, and you'll see that this is on the list down here. So again, you can click on the anywhere where there's color and identify the different brain regions on this list. For example, I can select this yellow region and see that it's the left hippocampus, and I can navigate to the anterior portion and see that just anterior to it is the amygdala. And I can jump up to the frontal lobe and see that this is the left middle frontal gyrus. So left mid frontal means left middle frontal gyrus. And inferior to that is the left inferior frontal gyrus. So left inferior frontal gyrus. And then I can go all the way up to the top and see the left superior frontal gyrus. And if you go back to the render view and make a change to, say, the azimuth, you can see these structures on the rendered brain. And so what you can see the superior, middle, and inferior frontal gyrus. You can also see the superior, middle, and inferior temporal gyrus. You can see the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus. And you can see the different anatomical structures in the parietal lobe, such as the superior parietal lobe, the angular gyrus, and the supermarginal gyrus. Okay? So again, using the rendered tool allows you to navigate to the surface of the brain and identify these structures 
in their Solar Sphere and see how they relate to each other. So next I want to show you a very useful feature of MRICron. So if I go down to the MRICron icon and I right click, I can open a new MRICron window. And I can also yoke these two windows together. So I can go to View, Yoke, and make sure that this is checked in both windows. And so if I left click in one window, it'll jump to that specific coordinate in the other one. And you can open as many MRI cron windows as you want. You're limited only by your computer. So this is a very useful way to, to navigate the brain and learn neuroanatomy. So I'm going to open the template again. So go to Open Template, CH2 Better. And I'm going to overlay Add. And I'm going to add the last atlas that has labeled structures in it. It's called this Atlas Sulci WM for white matter, BS for brainstem. I'll click Open. And we'll see that this has different structures than what you see in this gyri atlas. So this has the ventricles labeled. So here in blue are the lateral ventricles. Okay. And it has the sulci and fissures labeled. So here's the longitudinal fissure. Here in green is the central sulcus. To highlight the usefulness of having these two atlases open, and so I can go to Window Render. So I'm going to go to Overlay, Search, and select Below the Surface. So it's only showing me regions that are 16 millimeters deep in the brain. And you can see the central sulcus dividing this gyrus here and this gyrus here. And if we look in the gyrus atlas, we can see the labels associated with these di two different gyri. Okay, so in teal, you can see the precentral gyrus. And in purple, you can see the postcentral gyrus. Okay, so this is a way to use both atlases at the same time to learn these different brain structures and how they relate to each other. So going back to our list of structures, you can identify all of these structures that are listed in the three atlases that I went over. So for further example, we can see the white matter structures here, the corpus callosum, and the anterior commissure. So if we go back to the sulci white matter brainstem atlas, we can select different colors and get the brain regions associated with it. And so here in orange is the corpus callosum. And down here in green, this line that spans the hemispheres is the anterior commissure. And so one way to learn these structures is to select a given color, identify the brain region, study it, and then try to quiz yourself later by covering up this name here and um, trying to identify the brain structures just from memory. So the first step is simply to study. Next, you can use some of the resources that have included to help in quizzing yourself uh, and to help in studying. So if you go to Overlay Close, Overlay Add, and you select this Atlas Blank Overlay, what this gives you is the gyri overlay, but instead of having actual names associated with the different gyri, it just has a random number. So it can ask you the number associated with the left precentral gyrus, in which case this would be 40, or the right precentral gyrus, in which case this would be 95. Okay, so this is a blank atlas with a random number to facilitate quizzing. So of course you can use this for studying. When you have the yoke view, you can easily identify the name in the in here in the left window 
that is associated with the random number here on the right. The other set of resources you can use are brain files with missing brain structures. So if I go to File, Open, and I select the MBS1, this is mi missing brain structure 1, there is a structure that's missing from this brain. And the exercise is to identify this brain structure. The best way to do that is to left click up at the top and just hold and scroll down. And you're seeing in the axial view, the slices are changing as I'm scrolling down in the coronal view. Okay, So I haven't identified any missing brain structure yet. These structures are the ventricles. Okay, and so they're, they're supposed to be there. There's supposed to be darkness there. As I'm scrolling down, I see here that something is missing. So I can left click on here. And if I've studied, then I can identify this as the fusiform. If I'm still learning and want to use these resources, I could look on the gyri brain and see that it's called labeled the left fusiform. And so this exercise is good for testing brain navigation and testing whether you can determine if the parts of the brain are all intact and whether you can determine what's normal and what's not in a brain file. It's also great for learning neuroanatomy. Okay, so I've gone over using the different atlases that I've included with the materials, including the gyri lobes, the sulci, WMBS atlas. I've included the blank atlas that you can use to quiz yourself or to be quizzed as part of a course, and also the missing brain structure files where you can again quiz yourself or follow through on assignments for uh, as part of a course.